While the B-2 and F-35 receive more attention due to their modern designs and widespread recognition, the B-1B bomber, despite its age, has carried out numerous missions in recent years. The B-1 bomber, which made its combat debut in Operation Desert Fox in 1998, went on to conduct numerous missions in the prolonged wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, dropping thousands of JDAM. Capable of reaching speeds of Mach 1.25 at an altitude of 40,000 feet and operating at a ceiling of 60,000 feet, the B-1 can deploy various types of bombs, including the GBU-31, GBU-38, GBU-54J DAM, as well as the small diameter bomb, GBU-39. Therefore, despite being older, the B-1B has been actively employed as a vital component of a strategic plan to sustain a proficient and efficient bomber fleet until the introduction of a greater quantity of the new B-21 aircraft in the coming years. That is why the Air Force has been actively pursuing an extensive technological modernization of the B-1B, which includes enhancing the aircraft's weapons capabilities, upgrading its avionics and communication technology, as well as installing new engines. In recent years, the engines of the B-1 have undergone refurbishment to maintain their original performance specifications, and the aircraft has also received upgraded targeting and intelligence systems. Additionally, a new integrated battle station has been implemented, featuring updated aircrew displays and communication links to facilitate the sharing of in-flight data. Another enhancement, known as the Fully Integrated Targeting Pod, integrates the control and video feed from the targeting pod directly into the cockpit displays of the B-1. Furthermore, through upgrades to the bomb rack unit, the B-1 will have the capability to increase its carrying capacity of 500-pound class weapons by 60%. Currently, the Air Force has made modifications to the B-1B's weapons bay to enhance its weapon-carrying capabilities, resulting in an increased magazine capacity from 24 internally stored weapons to 40. These alterations to the bomb bay also enabled the B-1B to accommodate hypersonic weapons, significantly enhancing the aircraft's destructive power. Incorporating larger hypersonic weapons into the bomb bay of the B-1 aircraft carries several strategic implications. It not only significantly expands the range and target coverage, but also enables longer mission durations over targets, facilitating sustained attacks. Furthermore, the timing of these demonstrations holds significance as it aligns with two crucial objectives of the Air Force. Firstly, it aims to expedite the deployment of hypersonic weapons for warfare, and secondly, it seeks to maintain and enhance the B-1 to its fullest potential. The integration of large hypersonic weapons also aligns with the Air Force's overarching objective to rapidly incorporate advancements from the science and technology domain into operational deployment. Despite the ongoing enhancement, Boeing is suggesting that the Air Force transfer the evaluation of hypersonic missiles from the B-52 to the B-1 bomber by employing a newly designed pylon. According to Boeing, the B-1B bomber is expected to play a crucial role as a test platform for the advancement of hypersonic weapons within the U.S. Air Force. The company has revealed that a newly designed external pylon capable of accommodating payloads weighing up to 7,500 pounds will assist the aircraft in fulfilling this role. This pylon has the potential to enhance the B-1's ability to carry ammunition by 50% for various existing weapons. The Load Adaptable Modular or LAM pylon, developed by Boeing using its own funds, is currently being tested with the support of additional funds allocated by Congress. These tests are now in progress. Boeing is now serving as the primary contractor responsible for maintaining both the B-1B and B-52 bombers. The Air Force has outlined its intentions to retire all remaining B-1B by 2036 and gradually shift the units currently operating these bombers to the new B-21 Raider Stealth Bombers. 
Simultaneously, the Air Force plans to continue operating significantly upgraded B-52 until at least 2050. The B-2 Spirit stealth bomber fleet is also scheduled for retirement in the near future. Boeing considers the LAM pylon to be a crucial component that empowers the B-1B not only in its designated role but also in various other missions. These pylons are designed to be attached to the external hardpoints of the B-1B, which were initially intended for carrying additional air-launched cruise missiles armed with nuclear warheads, such as the strategic AGM-86 air-launched cruise missiles. This indicated their ability to support the carriage of heavy weapons in those positions. However, after the Cold War concluded, the Air Force removed the nuclear weapons capabilities from these bombers in accordance with the Nuclear Arms START Treaty, leading to the disuse of the hardpoints. However, Boeing has reactivated these hardpoints specifically for use with the LAM system since they are now usable as Russia has withdrawn from the new START Treaty. Boeing suggests that if a B-1B bomber is equipped with six LAM pylons positioned beneath its fuselage, it would have the capacity to carry either 12 future hypersonic cruise missiles or six of the Air Force's newly developed 5-000-pound class GBU-72B bunker busters externally. The pylons also have the potential to accommodate various other conventional weapons, such as an impressive total of 48 GBU-39B small diameter bombs with eight bombs per LAM. Additionally, B-1B bombers would still retain the ability to carry additional munitions in their three internal bomb bays. As you can see in the chart, the weapons loaded on the B-1 indicate the total heavy load the B-1 could mount with new LAM pylon. The specific hypersonic missiles that could potentially be launched from the B-1B using the LAM or other mounting hardware are yet to be determined. During the recent event at Tinker Air Force Base, Boeing showcased a LAM equipped with two mock-up hypersonic missiles as an illustration of its capabilities. A representative from the company clarified that these mock-ups represent a general design of a hypersonic weapon without specifying any particular missile. However, it is worth noting that the design of the mock-up shares several external similarities with Boeing's experimental hypersonic cruise missile, High Fly 2. The main distinction between the missile mock-up at Tinker and previous renderings of High Fly 2 is the inclusion of folding tail fins in the former design. Although currently there seems to be no immediate intention to convert High Fly 2 into a fully operational weapon, the Air Force's budget request for the 2024 fiscal year indicates that the development of High Fly 2, the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept project, and the U.S.-Australian Southern Cross Integrated Flight Research Experiment Initiative are all contributing to the Air Force's hypersonic attack cruise missile program. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.